In today's video, we're going to look at the Blazor Tailwind template and working with the Tailwind UI components to quickly create great looking custom UIs for Blazor WebAssembly. Blazor gives us a modern front end framework that enables developers to work completely in C sharp. When combining this with backends like Service Stack, we get to reuse our backend models, giving us completely typed end to end services. And while the default Blazor templates from Microsoft are built using Bootstrap, more and more developers are making great looking applications using Tailwind CSS. Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework that makes it fast to compose styles using consistently named utility classes. So rather than trying to encapsulate a complex set of styles into a larger CSS class, you can apply them directly in your HTML. The utility classes are just CSS styles, meaning it composes into your application as expected, but the brevity improves usability without creating a leaky abstraction. Another big reason Tailwind has become such a popular framework is the first class support for mobile responsive layouts. For example, styles can be optionally applied at responsive breakpoints using SM colon and MD colon prefixes for small and medium displays. A dark mode can also be supported, either by a native OS setting or manual switch by using the dark colon prefix. Tailwind itself is free to use, but they also offer a commercial set of quality pre-made components. The use of these components can be a huge value to a team without a designer, since they can be heavily reused and target many different use cases. When you purchase an account, you get access to all the HTML used to create a growing collection of well-designed components that can be quickly incorporated into your applications, even when using Blazor. You can of course still use Tailwind and the Blazor Tailwind template without their commercial components, and it provides a great basis for building UIs with CSS that follows a predictable and consistent naming convention. In this video, we're going to create a new project from scratch using the Blazor Tailwind template, show how Blazor and Tailwind work with Hot Reload, and incorporate a Tailwind UI component into our application. Before we get started, we'll want to have a few things installed. That includes the .NET 6 SDK, Node 16 LTS with NPM, and the Servicestack.NET X tool. If you don't have the Servicestack.NET X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install -gx. To create your Blazor Tailwind application, we can use the X tool using the command X new Blazor hyphen Tailwind space the name of your project. This will create your project in a folder with the specified name. Here we are using the name Blazor Tailwind. Once created, we can open the solution with your favorite.NET IDE. It's worth noting that at the time of recording, Visual Studio has the best support for Blazor development. Opening the solution, we have the standard four service stack projects of app host, service interface, service model, and tests, as well as the client project, which is our Blazor WebAssembly application. Running our application for the first time, we can see it has several example pages and functionality built into the template, all laid out using Tailwind CSS, which is cleanly designed and responsive by default. While our application is running, we can edit our Blazor pages and for most types of changes, they are updated in our browser automatically. However, for example, if we try to make our text bigger for the counter page heading by changing the text 2 xl to a text 8 xl the text actually gets smaller. This is because of how Tailwind works and even though text 8 xl is a valid style, it isn't in the application style sheet automatically. The Tailwind CLI works as a node process that scans your files for uses of known Tailwind CSS and generates a CSS file of all the used styles that your application references. This reduces the size of the full CSS that's needed to only the styles that you use in your application. The Tailwind CLI also watches these same files for any changes and regenerates the required CSS as needed. The template is set up with npm scripts to run Tailwind and watch for changes. You can run this script with the command npm run ui colon dev from a separate terminal in the client project. 
Now if we make changes, which include styles that haven't yet been used in your project, Tailwind will detect those styles and include any styles in the output CSS which have been referenced by our application. Now that the Tailwind CLI is running and watching our solution, let's utilize the Tailwind UI components to change how the bookings page looks and behaves. Navigating to bookings crud, we have a new bookings button that shows a new form at the top, pushing down the list of existing bookings in the UI. Let's say we wanted to change how the new bookings form was presented to the user. We can open up the tailwindui.com site and browse through the components to use in our own application. Scrolling down, we can see a section called overlays, which has a slide overs collection. Instead of pushing the form down, we could have it on the right hand side. Tailwind UI gives us examples to test it out, and once we've found the component we want to incorporate into our application, we can click the code view to see the HTML with Tailwind classes applied. Taking the first side panel, we can copy the HTML and add it to our bookings create.razor. The Tailwind UI components have comments and suggestions on where to use optional animation CSS classes and where to put your own content. Here, we will just move our create form into the content area of the panel and update. Clicking the create form now, we have our create form already laid out as a panel on the right hand side. The new provided close button doesn't work yet, but our control already had this functionality. So just by hooking in the existing close function to our new panel, we get a functioning side panel for our create booking. This literally took less than a minute to do and we have no additional dependencies. Because Tailwind uses consistent named utility classes, we can just drop in the HTML as provided in the component and it views as expected. Interactive behavior is commented and the documentation is provided specifically in the code we copied as well as more generally described in the documentation on the Tailwind website. Let's do another one. On the call hello page, we are populating some green text down the bottom with the response from the server. Let's turn this into a simple notification bubble. Again, we start by looking at tailwindui.com for some example components, and we have a few to choose from. Grabbing the code from the one we want, we can paste it straight into our call hello page at the bottom as suggested by the comments in the code. Next, we can populate the dynamic content from the API response by checking if the response.result has a value, otherwise don't show the inner HTML just as the comments above suggests. Within the if statement, we display the API values we want which are bound to our Blazor properties, as well as binding an onClick event to clear the result which will subsequently hide the notification. And again, a few minutes of work and we have a nice looking notification bubble for the response of our API message without any external dependencies. We get all this with hot reload support to provide an extremely fast development environment for building great looking Blazor user interfaces with a minimal of hassle. The Blazor Tailwind template gives us the Blazor development workflow we love with Tailwind styling which can make short work of building a great looking new project. By utilizing Tailwind and Tailwind components, we can pick and choose the functionality we need with the components that provide a consistent visual design, freeing us up to focus on the functionality we need to build for our application. Well that's it for this video, if you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects so anyone is welcome, and as always, thanks for watching.